Hi, I'm Kristen, and today I'm going to show you the quilt as you go method that I got super excited about and was kind of teasing last week um, when I was talking about my orphan block quilt in my stash buster video. Um, so that quilt was very complicated, but this week I'm going to show you how I made this one, which is really simple. I want to call this technique like stitch and flip, but it's not because that's that's about piecing a block kind of quilt as you go. This is a joining technique. So this is more about joining sections. Now these are simple sections. They're just a bit mostly solid fabric, but they could be blocks. So when you're watching this, don't kind of, um, it, you know, don't kind of make the mistake of thinking you can only use it with a certain type of quilt. If you think about it long enough, um, you can absolutely sort of arrange your quilt in order to use this method for pretty much anything, including, you know, traditional quilts that are made up of blocks. So um, as ever, there are timestamps in the description. So if you don't want to hear me rambling about or introducing or whatever, you can just uh, head on down and click to find the section that you want to find. So I'm going to talk about the simple one, just this just the joining technique. And then I'm going to talk about other ways you can use it at the end. So I found this technique um, from just sort of trawling YouTube, looking at videos of people doing quilt as you go on sergers. Uh, I don't have a serger. Uh, if you're in the UK, you might call it an overlocker. Um, anyways, I don't have that. And I d I've never even been in a room with one. <laughs> so I do, I do, you know, but the more I watch the videos and the more I was like, there is no reason. I don't think there's a reason why we can't do this on a normal sewing machine. So I had to go. And that big crazy orphan block quilt was my sort of experiment with um, different ways of doing it. And it, it totally worked, it was fine. <laughs> and you don't, I did use uh, an overlocking overcast stitch uh, to do my joining, but you don't have to. So lots of domestic sewing machines will have a stitch like that, um, but you don't necessarily need to use that one. You could use a tight zigzag or in a pinch, you could use a tight straight stitch, I think. Um, depending, you know, how big and heavy your sections are and how big you're making the things that you're joining and the, also depending on the, the type of quilting that you're going to do afterwards. So I'll get into all that. I just, you know how I overcomplicate things. I want to give you all the details, but I just, <laughs> I just got so excited about this method. Anyway, um, so I'll show you all that and then we'll have a chat about it all afterwards. Okay, so this is what we're starting with. Any block, okay. This is another one of those Allenson glass circle panels that I used for a doorstop thing last week. Um, I've got a few more of them left, so I'm going to use this one just to start off with and get um, some of the colors of the other fabrics that I'm going to use from this. Anyway, but that's not important. Uh, you could be using an orphan block. You could be using any block that you've just pieced. Or you could be using a plain solid color. It doesn't matter. This is 11 inches. Uh, it could, yours could be six inches, it could be 20, it doesn't matter. It could be a long strip. That's not the point. We just need to start with anything. Um, and the way I'm going to do it is build it up a little bit like a log cabin kind of thing or a courthouse steps or we'll see how it goes. I don't actually have a plan, but I'm not going to do big strips. I'm going to build it up from side to side so you can see the joining method that way. But you could really do it either way, as I uh, kind of said before. So... All I've done is cut my batting and my backing bigger. So pretend it's a quilt, <laughs> do the same thing. And I'm just gonna simply quilt this so that we can move on and join to the next piece, which is the exciting bit. Okay, so here this is now. First block quilted. So I've just got plain blue background. It's just wavy lines. Um, and I'm gonna trim it down right to the size of the block. So I'll do that now, and then we will join the next section. So here we are, trimmed down to 10 and 3 quarters, but as I say, the size does not matter. This could be smaller, this could be way bigger, this could be a different shape, doesn't matter. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is pick one side to add something to and measure out that new section. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see this. This is our quilted first block section, whatever you want. Again, doesn't matter what size that is, okay? And then this is going to be our second. We're going to, I know it's just a piece of fabric, but we're going to call it a block <laughs> or a section, right? Okay, again, it can be whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't matter how 
you know, wide, I've cut it or any of that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is put this right sides to right sides on the side I wanna join it to. It's a little bit, I've cut it a little bit bigger than the block and that's not for any kind of joining reason. You could do it closer. This is because I'm gonna quilt it afterwards and in case anything shifts, I just wanna have a little bit of extra. That's kind of one of the lessons I learned from that bigger <laughs> quilt that I did with this method. So um, so it doesn't matter how much bigger, this this was just like so I don't know what is that, half an inch, an inch, something either side, but it doesn't need to be that much. That's what it is, okay? Then we've got the batting. And again, I've cut this bigger just the same way uh, you always would when you're making a quilt in case when you quilt it, things shift. Right, and then this is the backing. Okay, it's solid. So I should have picked something with a print so, <laughs> because then I could show you where the right side goes. Um, but let's pretend this is the right side and that's the wrong side. So this is the right side and it's gonna go all the way underneath everything. So the two backings are gonna go right sides to right side as in that's the right side of the backing because that's the side we see. And this is the side we're gonna see on the next panel, right? So we're gonna pop that together. And again, it's cut much bigger just because I don't wanna be cut short because that happened a couple of times with the bigger quilts. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and now I'm gonna choose a stitch. So I tried this with um, a straight stitch. I tried it with a zigzag. I'm not sure about the straight stitch. I tried it with a zigzag, it was okay. Um, but since I'm trying to imitate a serger and my machine does have overcast stitches, that's what I've been using. So I need to change my stitch plate. Hang on, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've set, uh, I've chosen an overcast stitch in the machine, changed the foot, changed the needle plate. But if you don't have those stitches on your machine, try it with the zigzag, because it was it was fine. And because I'm just using quilting cotton and a thin, like 80-20 batting, it should be fine, even with the zigzag, because I'm gonna top stitch it after, essentially, with the quilting, right? Um, we'll get to that, don't worry. Um, but, because I'm just not sure, <laughs> I don't have a serger, so I don't know what the serger does. Does it flatten the seams? Is it is there a reason why we want that stitch instead of another? So that's what I've, st I've started using, but I'm not using the overcast foot because I just found that a bit fiddly for this because I don't think I really need it. So anyway, just a nice secure stitch is all we're going for. So choose the one you like, maybe do some experimenting yourself, but this is the one that I've been using. So let me just get the camera a bit closer if I can. Right, so hopefully you can see, so batting, top of the next section, top of the first section of our block that's already quilted with its batting and its backing, and then the batting, or the backing, sorry, but the second section, okay? So it's a great big thick sandwich. And I've not pinned it, I'm just holding it, but you, uh, pinning it might be a good idea, if it was a, especially if it was a bigger section or something like that. I am trying to sew this sort of at the quarter inch ish mark. <laughs> um, it's a bit harder when I'm using the overcast stitch that kind of goes back and forth so many times. I don't have a guide beside the foot, but basically um, doing my best to try and make that join a quarter inch in the same way that you would if you were just joining rows of a, of a quilt top. So I just took it slow as I did this. If you are using an overcast stitch, um, it's going to be slow. Um, obviously, when you see them doing it with the sergers on the video, sergers are quite quick. Um, so maybe that's part of the attraction. Maybe it's more the speed um, and getting those extra stitches and maybe it flattens it. I don't know. So it would be much faster if you used a straight stitch. Um, I was using on the orphan block quilt that I was doing, I was using denim and lots of heavy stuff. And I just felt like um, the seams were starting to pop open a bit at the edges when I was like manipulating them before it was, the whole thing was finished in the sections where I'd done the straight stitch. But I think it could be done especially if you really drop the stitch length. Uh, and also if you sort of planned the quilting afterwards so that you were definitely sort of top stitching over that in one direction or another. So I don't want to overcomplicate it now, um, but you know, you could play around and you know, see what kind of stitches you have on whatever machines you have and try that. And I guess if you have a serger, you could go back and forth. Um, you could do the joining on the serger and then come back and do the quilting on, the, um, on your domestic or wherever you do your quilting. So here it is. We've just stitched that, opened that up, joined on the front. We're obviously gonna quilt this and open it up on the back. 
joined. And this is what got me so excited. <laughs> I didn't, you don't have to fold over any backing pieces. There's no hand sewing. It's just, there's no, there's no joining strips, nothing. It's just joined. I got really excited about this because it just feels, yes, I can feel the seam here with my finger. It is a bit, it definitely feels like something. You can feel it. But I'm not convinced that it's thicker than any of those joining strip methods that I tried in my seven, um, quiz trying the, the video where I tried seven quilt as you go methods. Um, I'm not convinced that this is thicker than the joining strips, any of those methods. Um, it might be a bit thicker than the one where you don't sew the batting together. So the batting just sits flat together and then you fold over the back, but then you have to either, if you want to do it by machine, you have to accommodate that line of quilting on the front or you have to hand sew it. So this just felt easier and I feel like that's not super bulky. So we'll quilt it and we'll trim it and then I'll show you again what the seam looks like and then we'll join another section. So all I'm gonna do is I think do some more wavy lines. I've cut off some of them here on the edge, but I'm not worried about that. If I really wanted to, I could continue and try and join that. So you, I might try that actually. I was pre on the, the last one I was top stitching this line, but I, I might try because there's not much of that that I would be going over. So I might try and do that. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna quilt this because that's not the important bit. You can quilt it however you want. You could, this is a perfect one where you could be doing, you know, one free motion design here and one free motion quilting design here or stripes going one way, stripes going the other way. You can have fun with it. So anyway, I'm gonna quilt and trim and then uh, give you a look. Okay, so this is where we're at with the quilting. So that, I did the kind of wavy line just to, to stick it down. I had to like um, go over it twice there. So what I've decided instead for the next one is if I'm going to do that again, is not to quilt right up to the edge like I've done. So I'll leave a little bit of a gap and then I'll just do that last line over the join. Um, but again, straight lines would work just fine. I'm just doing the curvy lines because it's faster and quicker just to show you. <laughs> so, right. So now what I'm going to try and do without getting my head in the camera, if I can, is just trim this. So all I'm doing is trimming off the excess that I don't need so that it lines up with the sides of the first block. That's it. So there is block one and block two or section one and section two. This is on a small scale still, obviously, but now we can add anywhere we want to. So we can add here, we can add there, we can add along here or on there using the same thing. Um, and you can quilt all of those things differently. The key is when you quilt it and when you add the backing and stuff. So um, I was overcomplicating it with that orphan block quilt, which I'll talk about later. But so I'm gonna add another section on here. Oh, I said I was gonna show you. All right, so here is, hopefully you can see that. That is how thick that is. Okay, so it still looks, I'll hold it there like this, so you can see it all the way across. I don't think it looks massively thicker than say the unquilted area. Now, obviously it's harder, it's not as soft, but if you just look at it like this, it doesn't look like a great big bulge there, I don't think. I don't know, you let me know if it does. <laughs> and there it is from the back. So this is the line right here, where there's this like half double line of quilting here. This is where it is. Hoping you can see that. And then on the front. So that's where I tried to like catch it. So you could, what I was doing before was top stitching right along here, straight line, which flattens it even more. But I feel like that disguises it a bit more, but anyway. Because obviously if you've got a top stitch every time you've got a new thing and you aren't doing straight line quilting, then it kind of gives the game away. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to cut another section. So it could be anything, right? It could be a piece of solid fabric, could be blocks, could be whatever. And then we're going to join it again. So I picked my next section. It's this pink one. Okay. So that's the top batting, backing, and we're just going to join it exactly the same way we did before. So I'll show you one more time. And then I will just um, try and continue with the quilt and show you how it comes out. Obviously this way, this time when I quilt, I'm gonna have to be quilting 
that way. Unless the only thing I could do, if I wanted the lines to go the same way and it would be hard to match them up, I'd probably need to quilt this one first without the backing, then join it and the backing would not be quilted then. Um, so I prefer to just have the kind of illusion of the, the lines going in different directions. So I will show you on this one how I'm doing it and then I will show you on the, the larger orphan block quilt how I did it slightly differently for some of the sections um, and that might help you figure out what you can do with this technique because there's obviously simple ways to do it and then there's complicated ways to do it because it's all about when you put the backing on um, and when you do the quilting as to like how it's what it's going to end up looking like and what the back's going to be like. Okay so here's our two sections. So I want it on this side that's got the pink on it. So I'm going to put this like this. I'm going to put this top fabric, what would be, again, right sides to right sides. I know I'm using solids just to make it confusing for you, but anyway, right sides to right sides with the tops. Then I'm putting the batting. So I've cut the, the batting so it's larger, longer on one end and on the sides, but it's right up. It's, it's a straight edge. All of these are all at the same place here, okay? There's not, nothing's longer than anything else on that edge that you're sewing. They all just sit together. And then the backing, we'll call that the right side. And we'll just slip that underneath. So we're making a great big huge sandwich. And I'm just lining up all of the layers. It's worth pointing out, I am changing the thread every time. So this is just regular piecing thread. I probably can't see it there. Anyway, it's generally normal piecing thread in there right now, but every time that I'm quilting, I'm changing that out from a quilting thread. So I'm not piecing with the quilting thread, which is the only thing that's annoying, which is why if you did have a serger, maybe do this part on the serger, like, cause that's what the method is about. But anyway, okay. Okay, I am speeding this up. I have had some comments on my videos that sometimes I use the speed up uh, thing a bit too much and it makes things confusing for people. But literally this this is just so simple. All I'm doing is sewing around uh, down the straight edge. I stop every second or two to sort of make sure all my layers are still together and then I keep going. There's nothing else to it. Um, so for the sake of not making this video ridiculously long, I'm gonna speed it up here. So there it is, sewn together, open it up. And I didn't even notice when I was sewing over this joint at all, so that was fine. And then that's it inside, and then we open up the back. Okay, so easy peasy. And now I just have to quilt this pink section and then move on. There's section two on and trimmed. I just did the wavy line as close to the edge as I could, so it's not properly top stitched, so. Um, maybe it's more noticeable. I don't know. I still think it looks pretty good, to be honest. Back, uh, still pretty good. I didn't maybe pull it quite as tight there. You can see it there a little bit. I'll just try and hold it up so you can see. So you can kind of see the, the thicker area there, maybe. But there it is there. Still not huge. Anyway, so I still think that's looking all right. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of add some more colors, I guess. Okay, here we are with the fourth, yeah, one, two, three, fourth section joined. <laughs> um, this time I didn't try to put the wavy line right up here, so it's not top stitched. So you can see just how puffy it would be if it wasn't top stitched. There it is there. I still don't think, I mean, you can see it's fatter than that one. So I guess there's a little bit of a puff, but um, I still think it's looking all right. So I'm gonna keep going, trim some threads, keep adding sections. Section five is the yellow. There it is from the front and the back, a few threads. So you can see, well, for example, on this, so a little tip, so for this one, I pressed 
the backing fabric like away from the seam after I joined it and before I quilted it. And this one I didn't. So you can see that it, this one flaps a bit. It wasn't quite as taut. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just a little, you're not going to notice that, but it's not quite as taut as the other ones. So this is maybe a tiny mistake here, but basically uh, if you're not fully basting these after you've, because that's the other option, I suppose, after you've done the overcast theme or the zigzag, whatever you're doing, and you've opened it up, you could baste it with pins or spray or whatever before you quilt it. Um, but all I did this time was press it. And so that's what I'm gonna do moving forward. I didn't do that here, so I've got this little flap. So I'm just gonna keep on adding panels. The, you know, it really doesn't matter the size. This yellow is bigger than these. They're not meant to be the same size. It's just gonna be a bit organic, this quilt. <laughs> it's more to show you the joining technique and it's gonna be a baby quilt for a friend. So hopefully you can see this. The lighting's not great today, uh, but I've added um, a few more sections. So purple first, then it was the blue and then the red. Um, so as again, I'm not totally measuring these things. So <laughs> it's starting to go a bit wonky and I'm gonna add another a green section on this side and then I might see what the measurements are like and maybe add something top and bottom. But anyway, I wanted to show you the back for now. Some threads, hang on. So there's threads all over it, but um, so there'll be some places where I ironed really well and those joins look good and some where it could have benefited from maybe a top stitch or something instead of the wavy line. But anyway, but I still think it's relatively flat looking. Let me try and get an above shot there. And from the side again, try and focus on that. So that's about the thickness. Maybe that, can you see like that? So anyway, so I think it's coming along okay. Um, Again, we're not focusing on the quilt itself so much as how we join the pieces, but <laughs> I will add that section on, see what I'm doing there, and then I'll show you how it turned out. So here is the finished quilt. It's just kind of hanging up on some quilt hangers right now. Um, it's, it's not huge. It's like 39 by 50 odd, I think. Um, so it is kind of like a baby's play mat. Well, obviously, you know where I've joined these things and that it is the batting and the backing and everything. But I don't think that it looks super thick. I really don't, I don't know, maybe you do. But there it is like in profile with the binding, I guess. I guess you can see that that's a little bit thicker there, but I don't know. I can't massively see it. Um, much less on that side actually. Um, oh, it's got cat hair on it already. And I haven't sewn down the label, but anyway, uh, there's the back. I haven't picked all the threads off, but you can kind of see again where it's joined there. And I just think this is like true. It feels truly like quilt as you go. Do you know what I mean? Like I've kept it simple here, but like imagine you were making a bigger one, right? And you were doing like whatever pebbles or whatever you want in these sections. And yeah, it's not, pretend it's unbound bound as well. Right, and you can just decide to keep going and going and you just quilt literally as you go. You join it, you quilt, and then you decide if you're done or if you wanna keep going and making it bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> like, um, so that's that's my kind of definition of it. Um, anyway, so I really like this method, <laughs> as you can tell, so. So with the Orphan Block Quilt, what I did was start uh, so I basically started pulling out orphan blocks that had already been quilted. So it was like the block and the batting, but there was no backing. Um, and I was doing that for various things because I think at the time I liked the sort of false back quilt as you go method, which is also easy. Um, but with that, you don't get a lot of quilting on the back and you kind of have to stitch in the ditch or near the ditch or whatever in order to join the backing. So if you don't want to have those lines there, or you like your backs more quilted on, then, you know, that's that's the downside of that method, right? So this one, though, so I started with, 
because I was just playing around. I started out doing one block, so it had maybe been quilted a bit, but I quilted, quilted some more and put the backing on, and then I added the next section, so put the backing on the back and the, uh, the block that I'd already quilted or section I already had or whatever, joined them, flipped it open, as we said, um, and then and then just kept going and made a big row. So there was lots of little bits of backing fabric on there. And then I was like, okay, so now I need to join a next section. So it almost has to be a row again, right? But obviously if you do the same thing I did with the first row, then you would need like a joining strip to join those two. So instead I joined the blocks with the batting on to make a row, did a little bit of quilting, then did the joining, opened the back up. So now the back's attached, but it's not quilted on and then quilted and then did the same for the next row. So that's kind of how, if you were doing, I think that would be the easiest way if you were doing a quilt that had traditional blocks, obviously the orphan block quilt's a bit more random, but, um, but it was essentially put together in rows. So you would make your rows. You could even just do, make your roll up in cotton and then put it on the batting and attach uh, the next section so you'd have the two sections and then you could quilt even those two rows at a time if you wanted if that's the amount that you could fit through your machine and then do the same again with the next one you know it, it, there's just various ways you can do it so this one obviously I started in the middle I built out but it works just as well in rows so I hope you enjoyed that um, I don't know uh, if it's something you're going to want to try or not. I got super excited. I feel like this is the quilt as you go method I'm going to use whenever I do that now because it's even less fiddly than the one I used for my queen size quilt as you go, if you've seen that, which was like folding over the, you sort of joined everything else and then you folded over the backing fabric. And then I had to kind of find a way to build the joining stitch into the quilting on the front in order to not have to hand sew it shut basically. So it's like, you know, anyway, it was a bit more fiddly. This is easier and you can do whatever you want with the quilting. You don't have to have straight lines or anything else. And I don't, I really don't think anyone's going to notice that slight bulk at the join unless you're doing it. You know, even the orphan block quilt's got denim. It's got all sorts of, like loads of denim seams. And yeah, if you were fiddling around with it with your hands, you might find the thicker seams, but nobody a non-quilter who you gift it to or even a quilter who's looking at it wouldn't necessarily know it straight off the bat I feel like um you know I wouldn't probably wouldn't join a quilt like this if you're doing a show quilt but <laughs> I'm not making show quilts I don't know if you are so um yeah anyway I thought this was the super easiest way and I couldn't understand why we why there were so many videos about joining strips and everything else when you could just do it like this um so anyway so you might all have sergers and be doing all of this all the time anyways, and you don't need me to tell you about this method, but I got excited when I found it. So I just wanted to share it in case anybody else hadn't seen it or hadn't maybe hadn't thought about doing it on a domestic machine. Maybe just thought, oh, that's something someone with a serger can do, or that's only a method you can use if you don't want to actually quilt the blocks, but you absolutely can quilt them. So yeah, anyway. Um, if you enjoy videos like this, um, please do subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Bye.